Welcome to Forthright. I am Sulani Madsen, bringing you an audio podcast of my weekly newspaper column. This one inspired by the Twitter posts from Attorney General Bob Ferguson. Ferguson labels Dave Reichert, his opponent in the race for governor, as an extremist on abortion at every opportunity, even when the subject isn't abortion. I was prompted to write the column instead of just rolling my eyes at Twitter after reading an essay by Ayan Hirsi Ali on her Substack publication with the provocative title, The Abortion Election, Democrats Are Dangerous Extremists. There is a link to that piece on the Substack, and I'll include a quote on the podcast. And now on to my column, published Thursday, August 22nd, 2024, in the Spoken Review, titled, Democrats May Regret Focusing on Abortion in Governor's Race. In 1970, Washington voters passed Referendum 20 and made abortion safe, legal, and, let's hope, rare in the state. Subsequent legislatures have added additional protective language to satisfy the pro-choice majority. No governor has the ability to change those laws. And yet, Attorney General Bob Ferguson keeps waving the red flag of abortion rights in the race for Washington governor. His attempts to paint former Representative Dave Reichert as an abortion extremist are transparent political manipulation of voters' emotions. Ferguson repeatedly claims three congressional votes taken by Reichert deserve the label anti-choice. Reichert supported the Pain-Capable Unborn Child Protection Act in 2013, 2015, and 2017. The law never passed. It has been used by political activists against Democrats who killed the bill as heartless toward babies and characterizing Republicans who supported the bill as heartless toward women. Reichert released this statement on Twitter in response to the Ferguson campaign's manipulation. Quote, I won't and legally can't change Washington abortion laws. I believe a woman's medical decisions should stay between her and her doctor. End quote. The Ferguson campaign has been running television ads seeking to inflame passion around what is essentially a non-issue in the governor's race. The Reichert campaign's attorney recently sent a cease and desist order to King 5 in Seattle. The letter reads in part, quote, under current state law, abortions may not be performed once the fetus is viable, except to protect the health of the mother, and it is a class C felony to provide one outside of these circumstances. As of 2018, unborn children were generally considered viable at 23 weeks. Thus, the legislation that the advertisement asserts would ban and outlaw abortion would only reduce the period when abortions are permitted by approximately three weeks in most cases, end quote. Viability is a somewhat vague term, and it has changed greatly since Referendum 20 passed in 1970. Babies born at 20 weeks increasingly survive if they have advanced care available. Assuming Ferguson also supports current Washington law, he supports the same conditions for a ban on abortion as Reichert. When Referendum 20 passed in 1970, false negatives on pregnancy tests weren't unusual for the first 12 weeks, and ultrasounds to check fetal development were rarely offered. Depending on how the question is asked, Americans favor limits on abortion based on viability or favoring something closer to the European standard of 12 weeks. 50 years later, we know so much more and so much sooner than 12 weeks after conception about how a fetus grows. Continuing advances in medical technology raise new dilemmas. The Wall Street Journal dug into viability in an article published August 7th. The accepted standard of care is to require life-saving intervention for babies born alive on or after the 25th week. Babies younger than 20 weeks in the womb can't be saved yet. But what about the 8,000 or so babies born between 21 and 24 weeks this year? Lacking a robust national discussion on when human life and human rights begin, The decision on when to provide care between 21 and 24 weeks depends on access to a level 4 neonatal intensive care unit. Lacking access, parents of premature infants born before 25 weeks may not be given an option. Parents in Spokane have the right and the responsibility to make choices on behalf of their child, whether comfort care for a desperately ill baby or aggressive intervention with a chance for a normal life. Other parents don't have those choices. In a morally advanced society, caring for babies shouldn't be about access to health care. It should be about respecting the value of human life, regardless of age or location. And there are many points of common ground in a divided society if we drop abortion as a campaign weapon. 
For Ferguson to continue to push abortion as a leading issue may backfire. Washington voters across all political categories identify cost of living as their top issue. A poll result reinforced by the support for initiatives to reduce taxes, fees, and regulatory costs imposed by the governor and legislature. Executive branch actions driving the economy are definitely under the control of the governor. Abortion isn't on the ballot. Cost of living is. That's where the column ended. Um, you know, women have many concerns in their lives, in our lives, and all Americans have more nuanced attitudes than those expressed by the simple binary pro-choice versus pro-life. I attempted to include a rather long quote from Ayan Hirsi Ali's work in my column. But my editor found it distracting and particularly objected to the reference to post-birth abortion. Here's the quote that didn't make the cut. Uh, and a quote. Abortion is a very divisive issue on which intelligent people of goodwill vociferously disagree. However, only a tiny fragment of the population, mostly housed in the identity politics sections of academia, think that abortions should be legal up to or even past birth. Yes, past birth. And yet, these post-birth abortions have been legalized by several blue states, including recently in Governor Tim Waltz's Minnesota, end quote. Well, post-birth abortion is decidedly uh, an extreme position, and while it is technically not legal, it is at the bottom of the slippery slope when we ignore the moral question of when does a human life have human rights? Uh, when do you say that, you know, when do you provide care to the baby and when do you not? Uh, in the end, I think my editor was correct. Introducing Ali's extreme hypothetical would have dragged the column off track. In the same way, Ferguson bringing up abortion constantly drags the gubernatorial race off track from issues that really matter and in other areas of life and that actually are in a governor's area of responsibility. And it leaves Ferguson open to the question, do you support Washington's voter-approved law on abortion, setting a, lim setting a limit at viability, the same as your opponent does, or are you advocating for the radical democratic extremist position of no limits? It's the question I've started asking people on social, social media who start name-calling over pro-life posts. Do you support Washington law or do you support no limits? And if there are limits, then we need to discuss how we make sure all parents have choices that aren't dictated by their zip code. Unlike some of the families profiled in the recent Wall Street Journal article who were told their baby could only receive comfort care in dying after birth, we are blessed with a level four NICU in Spokane and two helicopter services ready to transport baby to the neonatal intensive care unit from outlying hospitals. And where babies are surviving at younger gestational ages with fewer long-term health issues. And so every time you see a negative campaign ad from the Ferguson campaign claiming his opponent is for limits on abortion, he isn't, just resist the manipulation. Or, or take him at his word and label him, as Ali proposes, a dangerous extremist. Ferguson may yet regret making it a key issue in his campaign. As always, reference links are included on the Substack post to this week's background reading. Uh, you are invited to subscribe for notifications of new content on a variety of regional topics, with or without a pledge, and thank you for listening. <laughs>